Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. So I'm making another video on this uh, van here, but I'm just going to title this one for how you can test your DPF with no tools, a nice, quick, easy test for anybody who's looking to check the health of their DPF or a car that they're buying. If you, It takes you literally a few seconds to do. It's the finger in the hole test, so I'm going to come outside and show you. So you find where the exhaust tip is, like that. You run your finger across it, and if you have a soot, especially if it comes out in lumps like that, so if you've got a very, very light marking of soot like this, like you can see here, on this side of my finger, you might get away with that. But if you've got soot particles like that, then that DPF is not doing its job. It's letting the soot come past. Now the whole point of a DPF is a diesel particle filter, that's what it stands for. So it should capture the soot particles, not let them come out of the exhaust. This is not doing that. You can see there, that exhaust is letting the soot come past. Now, if you've got a Euro 5 vehicle, you might you can get away with some tolerance on that because as long as the pressure is good, just because you've got a small piece, uh, well, large piece, large pieces of soot getting past, your DPF may still not flag up a fault because the pressure, the Euro 5s, uh, most Euro 5s and some Euro 6s only go by the pressure. And if the pressure is still good, even though some of the soot's getting past, it won't detect the problem. Uh, so you you can get away with having a DPF like this, especially on an older van like the one I've got there. I could probably check mine. I haven't checked it to be honest yet, but it's a good idea. I could probably check mine and there would be maybe some soot in there. It's an old vehicle with 270,000 miles on it. Um, that wouldn't flag up a fault unless the pressure got, the crack got so big or the damage got so big on the DPF that the pressure dropped in the DPF. If the pressure drops, the DPF will flag up a fault saying that the pressure is too low, but these Euro 6s have a particle matter sensor and any particle matter that comes past the DPF, it will detect it and flag you up a fault. Unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to put a new DPF on it. Unless you want to do what some people do is go down the DPF delete route. What I will say is this Ford Transit Connect here has had a new DPF from Ford and two days after it's fitted, the fault came back. So, what does this customer do from here? Um, I'd probably just advise trying to get rid of the van, but how do you get rid of the van? You can't just sell it onto another customer, onto another public member of the public. Um, try and argue your case with Ford maybe, or take the van to a scrapyard, because it is not suitable for road use. Um, if you put a new DPF on a van, and it kills it within two or three days. What are you supposed to do? Put a new DPF on every week? Um, I don't know how much he paid for that Ford. I haven't asked him. But he's also spent money in the thousands on sensors, knock sensors, DPF, pressure sensors, and all sorts of other stuff to try and rectify the problem. Been back more than a dozen times and the fault still comes back. So that's just a quick way you can test your, your sensor anyway. Um, or your DPF, sorry. Um, it's just an easy way to see if you have a healthy DPF on a car you're looking at to buy or your, your own car. If you see some there, some of that soot, it might indicate that your DPF is damaged or it's on its way out. So that's it. I'll see you on the next video.